Hello, <clears throat> it's 2.30 uh, January 27th, and I just woke up for the second time. <laughs> I'm working 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., and then 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is an interesting split shift, and approximately seven days a week. Well, seven days a week, I'm working at, it should come out to 42 hours. It doesn't quite because those are all the teaching hours that I sign up for, but we don't perfectly fill every hour. So I'm not sure how many hours per week it's exactly coming out to, but it's insane. I used to work way more than that and have way more energy. Uh, so it's it's weird, weird to maintain, but it's cool. I'm, I mean, I can just barely manage an almost full-time schedule. I guess, uh, which is major improvement over my work capacity before, so that's good. Uh, but having having issues arranging my my time and energy to a large extent. If I had more energy, I would have more time. But I sleep about five hours at night because that's how long I have in between shifts, and then that means I have to sleep probably at least four hours per day. Um, my sleep sleep needs seem to be quite a bit higher for the last couple of years. At one point there, I was sleeping about 16 hours a day, so it didn't account, accomplish much during that uh, that period, but I couldn't stay awake. awake. I would just sit down and fall asleep. Uh, so, nine hours is, is not bad. Then maybe if I meditate for another hour, so that takes out basically like 10 hours in, in resting time, and you get another six hours where I'm working, so you should, or I should, I guess, have another eight hours of other time, but it doesn't seem like it, and so I gotta, I have to get better at managing my time, uh, which is not uh, not extremely natural for me, and I have to prioritize income. I've not, I've never really prioritized income in my life, and that is not good uh, because money basically equals life. So at some point. You have to make money, lots of money, otherwise you die, and that is very true. So that has to raise way up. I need my health, obviously, for to make money, to make income. So that's important, and it, it kind of goes with that. But otherwise, income has to be prioritized. And then I think right now I'm going to prioritize the match, the Miller's Analogy Test for the IQ test, because... I really want to do good on that. I think I would feel really bad if I did bad on that. And I should, that's the thing, I should do well on it. I've been taking my tests every morning. I take a practice IQ test, a practice Miller's analogy test. And I've been scoring between 74% and 86%. And that's good. That's really good. I have to basically score... Somewhere between 68 and 70 percent is the cutoff for 95 percentile, so top 5 percent of the Miller's Analogy Test, which is the top 2 percentile for the general population IQ, so uh, or top 2 percent, so 98th percentile, which is kind of scary, right? That means this is a graduate entrance exam. That means the, the line barely shifts IQ-wise for people that get a bachelor's degree which means you do not have to be intelligent to get a bachelor's degree, which is kind of funny. Uh, but the difference between those two, right, if I score like a 74, I can get into Mensa, which is the top 2% high IQ society, which is really cool. But if I score like an 86, I could probably get into the triple nine society, which is 99.9% .9 percentile IQ, so the top point one, which would be better. <laughs> so, so it'd be really cool. But that, that fluctuation, I mean, that's a pretty large fluctuation on the percentages that I've been getting on that, that test. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I could always have a bad day and, and drop below that too, which would be very unfortunate. But I, I mean, I can take it again. They have different versions available. They don't only have one version, so you can take it multiple times so that's an option you know preferably I have to drive across the state and pay eighty dollars that I don't particularly have for this IQ test so be highly preferable that I do it the first time here which is why I'm practicing every morning so I think that's kind of my second priority and then 
writing. I just haven't been getting writing. I've been uh, tired and mismanaging my time. And then I kind of had some life issues. I wrote that thing on writer's block. And so I haven't been around writing. And if it comes down to it, like if I really only have time slash energy to read or write, I read. I read every time. Only after I get done reading do I ever write. And I think I might need to change that sequence in that I have to, like, decide that I have to write before I can read, maybe, uh, to change that up. Because I, I really need to make that happen. Preferably, I need to make some income happen with the writing. That would be nice. And the one way I was making it, where I made made several hundred dollars in, the, in those first few months, that direction is seems to have kind of dried up. I've only made a few cents off the last couple of articles, a few cents each. So that's not working out great. And let's see, what else? Um, oh, my brakes went out on my car so I drove around without brakes for two days and that was interesting technically I still had a little bit of braking power the braking fluid was leaking so I was filling that up as I was going and then I still barely had any I could press the brakes all the way to the floor and I would get like a little bit of braking power so you had to decide way ahead of time that you were going to stop somewhere it was a very weird experience to pass your brakes to the floor and not be slowing down very much at all. <laughs> You're like, well, I hope, I hope no one gets in front of me because <laughs> not stopping. And hopefully, I'm going to get those fixed. Well, probably not today at this point. I talked to the guy yesterday. My neighbor is, or mom's neighbor, is a mechanic, which is convenient, which is nice. He's very helpful. And I talked to him yesterday, and he said, would get it in today or tomorrow because I have to go somewhere on Monday and I have to go somewhere on Tuesday. So I really would prefer to not drive the car around without brakes, but the car is falling apart anyways. Uh, it's going to be a major part of my financial issues coming up or slash is now, I guess. So basically, all my stuff's broken. Um, my phone is obsolete and overloaded on memory and it's not functioning properly and my computer's broken and held together with electrical tape and my boots are blown out and my car is rusting apart so bad that I can't take it to a normal mechanic shop because no one will work on it because it's so rusty like it has you know half the exhaust system is ripped out strut is broken on one side it's gonna throw a spring fairly soon now the brakes are broken on it and uh, basically stuff is I mean stuff is literally falling off it uh, but I don't need to go very many places technically I've got the two Toastmasters groups which I shouldn't have taken on the second one I should have just done the first one it's been an interesting experience I've learned quite a bit about it about internal social dynamics between integrating two groups essentially because we took five of the same people from a company and integrated them into another group but they they don't actually integrate like if you took them one-on-one -on -one, because they, they keep their own social dominance hierarchy within it so you end up in in corporate culture essentially so you can end up with these conflicting cultures and dominance hierarchies whereas Toastmasters really doesn't have too much of one usually so it's been an interesting experience I've, I've learned quite a bit about it but it really doesn't add directly to my bottom line in any particular way so I need to change that up uh, most of these hours that I'm picking up almost all of them are through the big company uh, which I've basically given up being like fulfilled with teaching that type of thing, just punching a clock because uh, I have to make the money, which works out because they pay more anyways. So I get $16 an hour through them. The other company, I get $12 an hour. That's what it works out to. They both essentially pay by the half an hour and sometimes by the 14 minute lesson. But the other company is I have direct access like I can talk to the the founder and president and owner and we haven't been able to communicate super great in the past her first language is Chinese her second language is German and she lives in Germany and her third language is English at one point I asked her why she started the company and she never came up with an answer she was very confused about the question it was un unusual and then we didn't have a conversation for a long time <laughs> until I was going to run this reading 
group essentially I, I've only done one-on-one -on -one classes through both companies but this one is going to be three or four students and then you take them through a book or they like to do super popular books which are epic fantasy series are the most popular books generally and someone was doing one on Chronicles of Narnia already otherwise I would have probably done that one because it's a little more kid friendly I would say and it's shorter and easier but no one was doing Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings or the King Killer Chronicles or a bunch of other stuff but those Lord of the Rings is a little more difficult. I mean, it's almost like reading historical fiction, so I thought Harry Potter is great. And tons of my students have at least watched the movie Harry Potter, and some of them have been reading them. And I've encouraged them to read them in my individual classes. So I know Harry Potter is popular in China. So I thought, perfect. And I made up a thing and posted on Facebook a lesson plan outlining one lesson plan, the, the first lesson, and I was shooting for a two-hour lesson in 10 sessions, so 20 hours total, and then outlining the other 10 sessions very generally. And we had a really weird discussion about that, because she wants it to be discussion-based, but essentially she wants it to be a lecture, and she doesn't really want the students to read in the class, but essentially she wants the students to read in the class. So it's all very muddled, conflicted, and she kind of rejected my first one. So I proposed, I proposed like three three different ones uh, that I made up and sent to her so hopefully some variation or essentially um, so, like one of them was basically just a change in format so hopefully she's more used to seeing it that way one I copied from another class they have and just filled in the information that I would need so she should be used to seeing it that way anyways that would be cool to run that class and now oddly enough I had like these really high expectations of really trying to help kids learn English and I'm doing some cool stuff with kids. I have one girl that we're reading Charlotte's Web, but really we read like a page, maybe two during a class and then we talk and she is so curious about the United States especially. We go over tons of questions. We've gone over so much stuff. That one's really interesting. I have one little kid, he's, he's like eight, and he's really into Pokemon, like really into Pokemon. And that we, we've struggled with it, because anytime we do something with Pokemon, he basically completely loses focus and it kind of fries the, <laughs> the session. Uh, but we, I kept wading into it here slowly, and it seems like now he's, he's put it together, right? We can only deal with Pokemon if he still stays focused. And I think... In the next few months, I might have him up to writing, like, kid-style Pokemon stories, and, and potentially books. There's, I think he, I think he could probably do it, which would be cool, because he's eight. I've been dealing with a lot of, like, really advanced seven, eight, and nine-year-olds in math recently, which is pretty cool. I don't work my math skills that much. I There was a time when I was super good at algebra, or it came really naturally to me, basically. And so that, that's been interesting, really interesting. They've, they've all been young boys, seven, eight, and nine, I think, and just I mean, insane levels of math for that age. The one kid was some sort of savant, like he just had a feeling, you know, he could do five times 86 in, in his head, and it was just, it just came up. He could just feel it, which, and I was introducing him to algebra, and it threw him off a little bit because was, he couldn't do the same feeling thing, apparently. Uh, I don't really understand how his brain works exactly. So, and then his, I mean, his language skills were pretty normal. He seemed pretty normal in every other way that I interacted with him, but his math skills were unique, unique. And then, let's see, oh, one student. We went over The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. It was really interesting. We read through it, and we went through it uh, word by word, essentially, defining all the words that we needed to, and then we went through it line by line for meaning, and then stanza by stanza by, for meaning, and then the entire poem for meaning. Really cool. And now we're doing The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which is pretty crazy. It's much longer, for one. Uh, the Road Not Taken is... 20 lines I believe and the Raven is 108 lines and then it's much older from the 1800s I believe and much stronger darker content and harder language and it, but it's really cool so she's really engaged with the well so I'm doing a lot of cool stuff anyways 
But when I had these really high ideals and everything that I saw was wrong, I would like message someone about and try to get it corrected and all that stuff. Well, then my expectations were always above what was the actuality. So there was always this gap, which made me feel kind of bad, like, ah, we, you know, we should be doing better. But now that I've lowered my expectations to basically, I am here to make money. <laughs> I just need to make money. I really don't care what else happens. Well, then, I, since I'm there, I obviously teach the kids as best I can. And some of them not doing great. I mean, some of them, the kids don't care. They don't pay attention. It's hard. And then you're more like an entertainer than anything. And I do this, do this thing where uh, I have this caterpillar named Steve. I had to name him because one kid just would not accept that he didn't have a name. Uh, so I just throw out Steve. But I have Steve and I do this little trick uh, where, well, oh, actually, let's, yeah. Well, I do this little trick where I swallow him, right? And then regurgitate him, which is the part the kids love. And eh, some of the kids really like it. Some some kids don't care. But you become a little more of an entertainer with some of the kids. And I think that's, well, I know that's why some of the parents do it. Because they want to be able to sit their kids in front of something. And the kid just stays there while they get to do something else. Uh, which seems, and then, you know, if they learn some English along the way, great. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. But this, this difference of having these low expectations and then still the kids that I was making progress with, I'm still making progress with, or pushing them and, and myself as hard as I can in, in the best way that I can. And so now it feels way better than it did before because I was doing it the other way. So it turned out really good, right? Which uh, seems, seems a bit odd, I guess, but it, it's interesting. Anyway, I believe there's probably a bunch of other stuff. I can't remember what else I've been doing recently. Even though I just slept for like three hours, I'm still quite a bit tired. Uh, but that's that's a pretty decent update for now. And so I, I th I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I'm not sure. The uh, future is uh, always uncertain and unknown. Oh, I had one day where I had a lower heart rate, 88 beats per minute one morning or one evening, one evening. But it's never gotten that low again. Uh, and the last couple of days has been over a hundred, but I've been exhausted the last couple of days too. So that makes sense and goes together. Maybe I was just really rested that one day and got an 88 heart rate. I'm not sure, but that would be good, right? Because having a 90 or over a hundred average resting heart rate is really bad. And so hopefully, hopefully I have some improvements on that somewhere along the way. Changed up my chiropractic a little bit, so now I have Monday and Thursday adjustments, and I'm not sure if that's helping or not, but it's definitely changing something, which is what we were looking for, because I felt like I had plateaued. And I've changed my exercises that I've been doing, because the flag where you stick sideways off the pole, it worked one side more than the other, and really it aggravated my spine more than anything. My spine's trying to warp, I can feel it. Uh, it's, trying to work this way so I try to correct it this way I've been doing the bent press where you press something with one hand by bending over essentially it's the strongest one arm press in history I believe the record is still held by Arthur Saxon from the early 1900s with 385 pounds in, in one hand which is just impressive and he was just a little over 200 pounds which is it's just insane between that and I've been doing a, a type of a type of swing with a really light kettlebell too to try to work my back and my my lateral chain side to side to stabilize the spine and those seem to be helping so hopefully they they continue to because I, I need my health to at least maintain here preferably increase a bit so I can have a little more energy which gives me a little more time so we'll we will see how it goes but anyways until next time